You've probably seen very beautiful looking terminal setups on the internet and today we're just gonna go through how to transform your boring looking terminal into something that's very useful and beautiful at the same time. So we're just gonna get straight into it. The first thing we probably need to do is install ZSH if you haven't done that already. Now I have this uh, text file with the instructions here. It is available on most distribution repositories with the package name ZSH and once you install that with your package manager what you need to do is change your default shell to ZSH the way you do that is with this command and let's just break this down the CHSH command basically means change shell then the dash S flag basically means what, fla what shell do we want to change this to and we're gonna change this to user bin ZSH which is the full path to the Z shell and once you execute that command you'll need to log out of your system and then log back in and it should change your shell and when you open up your terminal emulator it should show you something like this now when you actually see something like this you can just press Q to quit and it will do absolutely nothing but if you do actually don't get uh, this thing and you instead get some sort of ZSH config then all you gotta do is uh, move that to .zshrc.back to back, back up that config because we're going to install something called oh my zsh now oh my zsh is a pretty awesome zsh configuration let me go ahead and open up my web browser to go to the oh my zsh website which i will leave in the description down below so let me go ahead and open this website right here which is in oh my z.sh let's click on the install button and we have two options here curl and wget now curl and wget are basically programs to download a file from the internet so for example if i use curl i can simply download this file here now curl i'm gonna using curl in this video but you can really use anything you want so uh, you can use wget if you want to so i'm just gonna install curl with pacman right here because i use arch linux and curl is already installed now we can simply copy this command and paste it into our terminal and what this is going to do is execute omzsh now if you get an error like this that says the dollar sign zsh folder is already exists then all you got to do is just remove that folder and then go ahead and execute this command again and it should start cloning omzsh right here and install it now when you first launch into omzsh this is what you're going to see it's a pretty beautiful looking zsh prompt and you can just leave with this but what I'm going to do is vim into my zshrc which is where you keep your zsh configuration and what I'm going to do is change the zsh theme now by default it's set to Robbie Russell but I like to change it to Egg Nostal which is a really good uh, looking power line style theme so if I launch zsh again you can see how it looks like it's pretty cool now the next thing we will want to change is our terminal emulator now right now it's using the XFCE terminal which is the default on this desktop environment but you can use whatever you want and what I'm going to do is go into western.org so in this tutorial I'm going to be using western as my terminal emulator now on Arch Linux you can just install it with sudo pacman dash s western dash dash needed and it should install it for you on other repositories you can simply go to the installation section in western.org which I will leave in the description down below you can see the Linux instructions here and once we download western we can simply run it so I'm gonna go to the application finder and run western and this is what western looks like by default now we'll obviously want to configure this so in the uh, configuration section in the western.org website we can see a default config here which is meant to be put in .western.lua so let me go into that file right here .western.lua and I'm gonna simply paste this in by pressing Control shift v in insert mode and for the config.color scheme we'll come back to that later on but for now what I'm gonna do is close western and run it again well let me just go to my uh, accessories application finder western and this is sort of like the default or example configuration for Western. We'll obviously want to change this. And the first thing we want to change is the color scheme. 
Right now the color scheme is not really good. So we're gonna want to go to the configuration section here and then we're gonna want to go to color schemes. And then we can simply browse the list of color schemes here. For this video, I'm gonna be using the Molokai color scheme. So let me quickly search for that, Molokai. And this is what the name is called. You can simply copy the code in here, go to my Western config, and then add it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do color scheme. Let me go ahead and remove this line and paste in this new line that we got from the documentation. I'm gonna paste that in. Now when I quit and quit my Western config, you can see that Western will actually live reload the config. So you don't need to quit Western and open it up again. It will just work as is. Now another thing we'll probably want to change is the tab bar. Now you can use this tab bar if you want to, but I just don't like using it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a tab bar here and I'm gonna config dot tab underscore bar. I think that's how you uh, dis disable the tab bar. I'm not sure though, does that do does that work? Let me see. So what you actually need to do in the config to hide the tab bar is paste this in. It is config dot hide underscore tab underscore bar underscore if underscore only underscore one underscore tab equals true. And that's how you hide your tab bar in Western. Now we have a pretty good looking Western config. Let me go ahead and launch Western again just to show you. Right? So let me go to the accessories, application finder, and Western. So you can see how our Western looks like right now. It's pretty minimal, right? Now the next thing we'll probably need to do is add some fast fetch config here. Right now if I run fast fetch, it's a pretty okay config. There's nothing wrong with this config, but we can make it better, right? So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and type in fast fetch dash dash then dash config. And I'm gonna go into the config fast fetch config dot json c. And I'm just gonna remove all of the stuff that I don't need here, like some theme stuff that I don't need, the font, I don't need that, I don't need the cursor, I don't need my uh, swap disk, local IP, battery, power adapter, local, I don't need any of that. We can also remove stuff like my display. And that should make our fast fetch config way more minimal. Now one thing we can also do is go into the config and go to the logo here. So I'm gonna add a section called logo. And that's basically gonna contain the source or type. We're gonna just set the type to small. And that should be it for the fast fetch config. Make sure to add these comments here, otherwise it's obviously not gonna work. Now if I do a fast fetch again, you can see that we have a way more small logo now, which probably means I should also just remove some of the options here. I don't need my host, kernel, uptime, packages, any of that. Probably don't need my icons in there. I'll get rid of GPU as well. Now the fast switch config should be a very small little fast switch config. And that's pretty nice to have this very small little fast switch config. Now uh, the next thing we'll probably need to install is our ZSH plugins. So I'm going to install the ZSH plugin from ZSH users. ZSH auto suggestions which will basically give us auto suggestions like on the fish shell for ZSH so I'm gonna go to the install.md here on my ZSH go ahead and paste this in and it should clone on my ZSH or ZSH suggestions then we can go ahead and edit our ZSH RC go to our plugins there and add this uh, ZSH auto suggestions. There we go. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and launch my terminal again. Let's, let's just load a uh, Western. So we're going to go ahead and launch Western there. I keep misclicking to this Aqua Linux thing. Now, when I go into a a folder and then I type it again you can see that now I have the auto suggestions so if I type in some commands you can see that now I have the auto suggestions there which is really nice to have 
and that's pretty much it for customizing our terminal and making it look good anyways i hope you enjoyed this video and i will see you later